Hi, my name is Kenner from TQS Mortgage. If you are watching this video for the first time, do check out the rest of our videos which have different topics to cover in terms of bank loan applications, bridging loan, as well as decoupling as well. In today's video, we will be covering for first time private property buyers as well as HDB upgraders buying their first private property. Let's go in depth in this topic. So if you are HDB upgraders to private, one of the common questions I always receive from our clients is that can I purchase my private property first before selling my existing HDB? The answer is yes, you can do that concurrently. But of course, there are a few pointers you need to take note if you are looking to purchase a private property first before selling your HDB. One of the common tricks used in the market will be that you want to ask for a longer option period because a standard option period for a private property is usually two weeks. So what you want to request is potentially maybe a one month, two month, or even up to a three month option period. If you are looking to get a longer option period instead of the standard two weeks, the seller of the property might want to ask you for a higher option fee. So instead of 1%, it might be a 2% or 3% depending on how long of option period you can. So if the seller is not willing to extend, what will happen next is that you will still go through the normal process paying the 1%, 4% to exercise the option and you will need to incur the additional buyer stamp duty. If this is your matrimony home, you can actually ask for ABSD remission if you sell your house within six months from the time you have actually exercised your private property. So if you are a HDB upgrader which you have already sold your property, and you are currently in the transition of finding your private property. One way, if you do not wish to rent back your HDB or to find another accommodation to rent within the next couple of months while you are buying your private, you can actually ask for a shorter completion period for your private property. But you might face some challenge within this process. Why do I say that? Because some owners, you might require the cash proceeds from your HDB selling to purchase your private. That is where you can actually use a bridging loan to close up the gap. So the bridging loan will actually help to facilitate your cash proceeds from your HDB sales for the down payment for your private property. So if you are first time private property buyers, what are the things you potentially want to take note of? So number one, uh, the question should be, do you see a property first or do you get it approved in principle? Our recommendation will always be getting a approved in principle first. Why? Because you need to determine how much is your loan eligibility amount before you start shopping in the property market on what is the kind of purchase price or quantum you are looking at so that you know whether your income is sufficient to support on your purchase. So if you are a parent who are looking to purchase a property for your kids, example, they are above 21 years old, but they are still schooling and they do not have an income, are they eligible for a mortgage loan? The answer is actually yes. As long as they are above 21 years old, even though they do not have an income, the banks are still able to grant a loan by doing so-called, you can show fund under your kids name for them to qualify for TDSR, or you can actually pledge a sum of money to the banks for them to get a 75% loan as well. So this is one of the very common methods a lot of parents are using nowadays to buy a property under the kid's name. But of course, if your kids are below 21 years old, then potentially you need to do under trust. So while it's under a trust, you need to actually fully pay the property. You are not able to get a mortgage loan for a property which is under trust. Another thing about prior property is the manners of holding. What do I mean by manner of holding? That means you can hold it under joint tenancy or tenancy in common. So under joint tenancy is usually 50-50. But for a tenancy in common, you can choose either 50-50 or it can be in the manner of 70-30, 90-10, up to you. It can also be determined on the cash down payment. So example, party A and party B, you are non-related and you guys are looking to buy a private property for investment. But for party A has more cash, um, maybe out of the down payment, uh, he is able to contribute 90%. So he can be holding 90% of the shares of the property whereby party B, you can actually just hold a 10%. And also if you're buying with friends, instead of just 2%, it can be a 3 or 4% owning a private property. So this is giving you a head start in your property investment journey. So what are the fees and charges involved when you're buying a private property? So if you're buying a property below 1 million, uh, the buyer's stamp duty is 
3% of the purchase price minus 5004 This is actually a simplified calculation. But if you're buying a private property above a million, it's actually 4% of the purchase price minus 15004 Next will be lawyer fee. A lawyer fee depends on the purchase price. If you're buying a private property using less than 2 million, the lawyer fee will range maybe from 2005 to $3,000. Next will be actually valuation fee. Valuation fee usually range in hundreds, but of course it also correlate with the purchase price you are buying. Usually for less than 2 million, property purchase price is about 300 to 500. But if you are buying a building under construction, usually the valuation is much lower. Maybe it range from 100 to 200 dollars. And some banks actually don't charge you for a valuation fee for a building under construction property. Lastly, will be the fire insurance. So for fire insurance, it's only applicable if you are buying a resale or a completed. But if you are buying a building under construction property, usually the banks do not require you to have a fire insurance because there is no property to be covered. So only upon TOP, when you collect your keys, that is where the banks will start to charge you a fire insurance for the property. I hope this video is useful for you today. If you have some other videos in mind, please comment below and we might be picking up your comment and to do a video to address to your concerns. Once again, my name is Kenneth from KeyQuest Mortgage.